People are attracted to cities. Every week around the world, over a million people move to cities. They're attracted by better jobs. They're attracted by more cultural opportunities. But most of all, they're simply attracted by the fact that there's other people there. But this creates a problem, because the attraction creates pressure on space. So this is London, where I live and work. And London has, at its centre, a small cluster of tall buildings. And then you have this metropolis that spreads out, as far as you can see, a mix of low-density streets and villages. And as more people continue to come to London, we need to think about where we're going to put them all, because we can't simply keep pushing out and out. So our planning system is so important to help us figure out what are we going to do with all of these people. You see, in London and many other cities like it, you have a problem that people call a housing crisis. And what this means is that there's a perceived shortage of space, and as a result, the cost of living is becoming increasingly unaffordable. But the thing is, there's lots of space. And I'm going to show you, I have three short stories about the people who live in cities and the spaces that are their homes. So Alex and Annie bought a rundown end of terraced house, and they dreamed of turning it into a beautiful home full of light. And what they loved about this house, what attracted it to them in the first instance, was this view from one of the windows to a nearby park. So when they thought about how they could alter and extend this property to suit their needs as a growing family, we thought about the volume that was available. And by thinking about the space in terms of height, they were able to create two spaces that are close to each other, but have different qualities of views and light. So while Alex works in the kitchen, Annie can enjoy the view from the window seat over to the park. Now what I think is really interesting about this project, despite the fact it's very small, in the scale of the city, is that they've thought about the space in terms of volume, and that is the key to understanding how we can use space better. This is Richie. Richie is a 25-year-old graduate, and he's looking forward to moving to the city to start his first job. Now, on his salary, his options for finding accommodation are either to live way out, miles away from all of the action, or else to live in a very small, poor quality space, the kind of place that he would be ashamed to ever bring anyone back to. Here we looked at this warehouse and how it could be rehabilitated to provide a co-living space for young city makers like Richie. So by removing the roof and establishing a volume, one that would not impact the light to neighbouring properties, we are able to insert a series of seven small studios with shared communal facilities. Now, by virtue of being small, these spaces can be affordable. But to compensate for that, you have all of these shared facilities, like outdoor areas, kitchen, games room, and utility space. So for young city makers like Richie, you get the best of both worlds. You have your own private affordable space, but also space that promotes the kind of social interaction that they came to the city for in the first place. This is Jessica. And Jessica and her neighbours live in a terrace street in East London. And they all got together because they wanted to collaborate on a project, to work together to extend their homes up. And for some, the reason they wanted to do this was commercial, to realise the value of that extra space. But for others, the value of that extra space was a difference between staying in the area that they knew as home or relocating further outside the city. So we looked at each house. The houses themselves are low density in comparison with their neighbours. We established a volume, one again that would not impact the light to the neighbouring properties, and also take into account the scale of the surrounding street. Expanding into this volume would allow each household the ability to realise the potential of the space above their homes, and would also allow them the opportunity to create their own ideal home. What was so interesting about working with Jessica and her neighbours is they had this real enthusiasm and positivity for making their own place in the city. Unfortunately, we often come across the opposite to this enthusiasm, because human resistance 
to change and new development is very powerful. And in a way, it's understandable. But cities do not have the same lifespan as people. Cities must grow and adapt and change. It's important we conserve the parts that are of historic interest, but it's equally important that we allow our cities to be dynamic, to welcome new people in. London needs 50,000 new homes each year to satisfy the demand for all these people who are coming. But we only have the capacity to build half of that. However, we know the space is there. So how can we realize it? How can we manage to make the city more comfortable for everyone? Well, the tool that we have to do this is the planning system. And at the moment, the planning system reacts to proposals that are put forward for development. But what if we could turn this around? What if instead of reacting, the planning system could promote the use of space? The planning system could identify space and say, here it is. Go. Use it. We can extend our space in our own homes so we don't outgrow them. We can find gaps between existing buildings and insert new homes there. We can unlock the space above existing, existing buildings so that can be brought into play and identify modern housing solutions like co-living that work for people at different stages of their lives. We can even allow like-minded citizens to work together towards a common goal of realizing the potential of their own place within the city. These volumes are based on simple calculations of light. With the resources we have now, like 3D scanning and artificial intelligence, it's very easy to identify them. All we have to do then is to fill these volumes with, with creativity and intelligence. So why do we need to do this? Why is this important? Well, if we don't do this, all of these people are going to come anyway. And the city will just keep spreading out in this sprawl. But if we can find a way to make the city comfortable for all these new people, it will not only be more sustainable, but the cities will become even more interesting places to live. <laughs>